but the lead in, in the movie to play Anthony Broly's part, the part of the gay guy. And um, um, and then uh, I didn't get it because they went to, you know, Anthony got it. But when I first read the script, I really loved the role of Terry. Like that was my favorite part when I read it. But I knew they wouldn't see me before because I'd never done a comedy before. <clears throat> I'd, only, I'd only done like these really heavy dramas like Swoon and um, I Shot Andy Warhol and and these brisk and these really dark you know, dark dram dramas. And so to, and I knew I really wanted to play Terry, so I, I, I had a plan, and I knew that what Terry- What was the plan? Terry, <laughs> Terry gets, at the end, I knew Terry was in, gets a pick to Marilyn Monroe at the end. So I was like, <laughs> so I went down to, with my own money, I went to this, to this drag queen for Fidia, who had a shop on, the, on like Bleecker Street, and I paid her my own money to get dressed up as Marilyn Monroe, and I went to the audition in full drag as Marilyn Monroe, like full on falsy style thing. And, um, and they like were floored that I walked in like that, and that's how I got the part. Because I think that's the, 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 the main guy, the gay guy, Warren, but um, yeah. Hair is 90% of acting, it's really important that you talk about this. <laughs> they don't teach you that in school. But. Great role, and you had all the best one liners, right? <laughs> best <laughs> one liners. <laughs> Yeah, it's really funny. I mean, the, the director, the script was really funny when you read it. It's exactly what I thought it was going to be like when I made it. And it was a fun, it was a really fun group of people. Like, just Molly Price, who played um, Meryl. Uh, she's so fantastic. Funny <laughs> that I, she, I, when I watch the scenes now, all I think about is like, don't laugh, don't laugh. Like, when I was in the scene with her, she kept making me, I was trying so hard not to laugh because she was so funny. And when I, and then, uh, what was your next project after Kiss Me? Back to drama, or? Um, I think I did a movie called I did a movie called The Misadventures of Margaret, which is uh, never came out in the United States. It was in London, and I shot it. There, Bert Shields was in it um, with me, and um, Jeremy Northam and Parker Posey, and um, and I was there for three months. Actually, the last time I saw this movie on the big screen was with, was with Bert Shields, because we were doing that movie at the time when Kiss Me Guido came out, so I went with her and her mom to see it at, at the theater, and that's the last time I actually saw the movie. Wow. Was when I was making that movie, so. Do you prefer uh, comedy or drama? Or um, I, prefer, I prefer comedy, yeah, comedy. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just more, it's just, when I was younger, it was more fun to, to so, you know, because I was I one of people, to, I'm gonna express my pain, and now I'm just like too tired. <laughs> and uh, oh, tell us about um, let's see your stint on uh, Sex and the City. You did a great episode. Was, when I was watching the movie, I kept thinking about like that because this was like 1997, right? That was like right before the year that Sex and the City came on. I think right, like, correct. The year before or something. So like it just there were the New York City was such a, it was such a great time to be in New York, you know. And I remember. Like watching it, just I was so nostalgic for that time and for for New York at that time, and also there's like telephones and it was texting, and it just seems so like innocent now, you know. It's just so refreshing and that whole analog of it all. But I, I um, yeah, because of, because of this this part, I was up for some TV shows and I I got Sex in the City kind of because of this part because the characters are similar and um. But yeah, I did a scene with Samantha um, Birkin, Birkin bad guy in a Hermes, <laughs> and that I did that show, and then I'd never seen, I actually never watched Sex and the City, seen a couple of times, and when I showed up on the set, Kim Cattrall was in the trailer with me. It was like really early, and she had like curlers in her hair, and, and she was like, I didn't know her, I didn't know much about her, her character, and she was like, and I was working on my book at the time, and. And then she, I, she, I said it was so nice to be acting because I've been writing, and she's like, I'm writing a book too, and. I'm like, really, what's it about? She's like, sex. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's like a very Samantha thing to say. But um, yeah, just so I did, I did, I did Sex in the City in 2000 or 99. I think I shot it like, right after this. So, um, and uh, what are you currently working on? I'm currently working on the Adam and Steve sequel, um, which is coming together yeah, 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 pretty easily. Okay. <laughs> um, it's very, um, um, it's called Adam and Steve 55 Plus. It's a, it's a self-explanatory <laughs> title. Um, and it's sort of just, it's a very similar, it's kind of like this movie, it's very similar, got the same kind of comedic spirit. Um, and uh, yeah, it's... And it's, where does it take place? It takes place in Palm Springs, if anyone wants to be an extra. 
Um, it's shooting, we're shooting for one day, December 7th at the Christmas parade. There's a crazy gay tap dancing number in the Christmas parade that we're doing. Um, and and uh, then we're shooting for real in May next year. And then we'll start the week, first week of May, we're shooting principal photography. And it all takes place in Palm Springs, right? It takes place here, yeah. It's, it's, it's about, you know, all of you. <laughs> and me. <laughs> and the tramway, right? The tram, it's all yeah, the trams and trams and location. Nice. Uh, trying to use the city as I can't believe no one's made a movie here. It's such a, I mean, really showing off this location. And quads. What did you say? And quads, which will be and fun. Quads is in the movie, yes. Which is, yes. Quads is in the movie. Um, so, yeah, I'm just like, you know, I'm just writing about how weird it is to be older and gay and getting older, like in our generation. And, um, yeah. You're 55, you're just a baby. You're out here, right? <laughs> well, I, I live in a 55 plus community, so I'm like the twink there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, and then my hair was, my, the reason I bleached my hair is because um, um, all the other actors had brown, well, just all the Italian, everyone was Italian and dark hairs, and I had really black hair, so I, I, bleached, I thought I bleached my hair blonde. And I used to watch these, before I went to the set every day, I would watch the um, Truth or Dare Madonna documentary um, on VHS from, in my apartment before I went to set because I modeled Terry after those, those backup dancers. Like, they was in my mind, like, that was the vibe I was trying to capture when I played, when I played that part. And, um, and now Kevin Steer, uh, you know Kevin Yeah, Steer, Kevin Steer, yeah, yeah, he's going to be in it. He's in a sequel to Adam and Steve, he did a dancer, and he was in the first movie too. But, but, um, but yeah, that's that was my, my whole headset. Headspace was like, you know, truth or dare, backup dancer. And um, so, Craig, when did you um, become interested in writing, or what what propelled you to want to explore well, I was, that? I was openly gay uh, when my, when Swoop came out. I was openly gay after 1992, So that was sort of unusual at the time. And um, and as a result, I experienced a lot of like. Homophobia and saw a lot of stuff in Hollywood because I, I, I was at first Bird Award and all these people. I was like at Simon William Morris and it was like this big thing. So with the Sundance and all these awards and stuff. So I, I had like a legitimate career, legitimate part in the movie that was taken seriously, but I was openly gay. So people didn't really know what to do with me. And um, I was always going in for like, oh, and I, I was always was going in for like the torture, like schizophrenic gay guy or something. And, and um, and I actually did because um, um, I was, was going to forgot to mention, but whenever I did this, because of this movie, I was um, I tested for I was up for Jack at Will and Grace, like it was basically between me and Sean Gates. Really wow! And Tell us that story. That's really interesting. Um, I mean, it was just the, the movie came out, and I remember reading the Will and Grace script, and I was like, this is never going to be successful. <laughs> it's just, it's just so stupid. I didn't not think I didn't get it. And I remember the audition, there was a bird cage or something, and Jack has a bird in cage. I, I, I just remember that part of it. But, but yeah, I auditioned for the pilot, and I was, um, and, um, and uh, I didn't get it. I was like, I was, you know, always like, you know, bridesmaid. But I, but I, um, but it was because of this movie that I got that audition. It's a very similar character to Jack. And, um, and then they made a TV show out of Kiss Me Guido, and it was called Some of My Best Friends. Which um, um, star Jason Bateman as the as the gay guy, and I forget who played the straight guy Frankie. Uh, bad for forgetting, um, but Alec Mappa played my character in the TV show. Um, he was he played Terry. All the other characters were the same, and my character was Asian <laughs> because there because there was so much like there were, I was so similar to Jack, and there'd be like two Jacks on TV at the same time. So Alec is did it. He's hysterical, and I love him. He's really really brilliant. So. But that they did have a life after this. They went on to make a, they made a TV show out of it. Um, but um, and you wrote on uh, HBO's True Blood. Too. Yeah, after my act, my acting career sort of fizzled. So I, I wrote a book in 2003 because I had this. I forgot I was talking about that. I I had this career as an openly gay actor, and so I was approached by St. Martin's Press to app, write a book about being gay and being out out in Hollywood, like in the 90s. So I wrote my I wrote a memoir based on funny stories about you know that crazy time, and then because of that I, um, that's how really I became a writer. When I said I got to write my book, and I was like, oh, I like this so much more in some ways, because um, I'm I'm actually believe it, I'm kind of a little shy watching. I'm watching that movie. I'm like, how did I do that? 
sometimes I'm, I, if I have a character, I'm much more able to play that, be you know, extroverted. Um, but I, I um, so my book, I wrote this book and then um, I went on a book tour and it was such a fun experience. And, and then from that I wrote, I sort of got, I was a writer and then I, I wrote the screenplay for Adam and Steve and then because of that I, I wrote, I wrote um, three seasons of The Biggest Sketch Show for Logo. I worked on that show, produced that show. And that was a really, that was like entrance into television. And then from that I got an agent and I, Lisa Kudra read my book that had been on a print for a while and she wanted to make a show about religion. And my mom was religious, there's funny stories about that. So I pitched a, a show to Showtime and HBO with her and her producers and um, it Showtime bought it and that's how I got into television as a writer. And I wrote, I adapted my book as a pilot for Showtime and then I, I just started getting jobs as a TV writer, so it just sort of happened. Over time, True Blood, the last, last sort of big job I had was that, yeah, 2014. Fantastic. I'm tired, I'm busy, I'm busy. But I, I, I really like writing for television. It's really um, very. Um, I mean, it's just you know, it's just I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I, watching the movie is really it was it was really interesting to watch it because it's such a. You know, an independent film is just, it's nothing else like a real independent film. And it's, I don't really like the culture nowadays. I don't like it. I don't, I'm, maybe I'm just because I'm old, but I just feel like it's so mean. And this movie's very, it's, you know, it has such a good, good heart. It's a good spirit. And God, I do sound bold. I sound bold. But, um, but yeah. Excellent. And uh, how long have you been working on the Adam and Steve 55 plus uh, screenplay? Um, I've been, I wrote it a year ago, but I've been, I've actually, I've been rewriting it because we, I rated it too expensive and we have to make it like, in, like you know, not, not, not this big budget movie, so I, I've been writing it, um, yeah. rewriting it to make it more so cost effective <laughs> um, and, um, and also just it just evolves as time goes on and things change and we get locations. We have this really great location we're shooting now, which is this big house called La Piedra, which is up near the Bob Hope House. Bob Hope house. Um, it's one of our main locations, so I've been writing it for, for that location, rewriting it for that. And, um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's, it's, it's, we're, yeah, it's coming together kind of, kind of, it feels like the right time, so it's coming together. We're looking forward to that. It's going to be great, right? Yeah. And it'll come out, he said, hopefully. It's a Christmas movie, so. Christmas of yeah, next year? That's what we're shooting at the Christmas parade. There's a crazy. I think I said gay tap dancing number mm -hmm. in the movie, um, and so um, uh, it's it's coming out hopefully December of 2025. The first movie came out in 2005, so it's the 20th anniversary that they they wanted to come out the same year as the 20th anniversary. So like from a marketing point of view, so that's why why it's sort of coming together quickly. But yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you again for being yes, here. Thank you. Participating in this and last night as well it was fantastic. Thanks, Stephen. And thank yes. you all for being Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And thank you, Paul, for uh, Yes. Thank you, Craig. You're amazing. And we can't wait.